I mean, like, I think that the Arrowverse has some good qualities. Well, I would argue that they've really got some work to do and that it's kind of too late for DC in many ways. Really? Name five things that are bad about the Arrowverse, I dare you. Only if you name five good things about it. Fine. Fine. In a 10 multiverse. While Arrow did start out as a single show, the popularity ended up creating The Flash, which was introduced in Arrow Season 2 Episode 8 and concluded in Episode 9, where Barry learns Oliver's identity and then saves his life. That spin-off then started with flying colors and then led to the creation of Legends of Tomorrow, Supergirl, Batwoman, Superman and Lois, Stargirl, and more. And I mean, come on, with superhero shows like The Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and others not making the meme seem proper for these kinds of things, the Arrowverse came in and changed superhero TV for the better. Without the Arrowverse, Marvel may have not had enough confidence to actually try again with WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and Loki, especially after Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which tried to explain why the Avengers were getting Loki's scepter in Age of Ultron, but ultimately didn't. So yeah, a multiverse giving hundreds of people jobs that revitalized the superhero TV show genre? Yeah, that's a cinema win in my book. Speaking of a multiverse, did you know that we have a multiverse of channels? The newest of which that you should come check out is Minecraft Nightmare, okay? If you like Minecraft, you'll love our channel. So come say hi, say you're from Top 10 Nerd. Plus, I mean, it's more of me. How could you say no? You all love me here. There's been no hate comments at all. Never. At number nine is that the shows are too long. My first criticism is that if the Arrowverse had formatted their shows as limited series, they could have explored more different angles of the DC universe. And the effect that would have on the world building would be immense for a couple of reasons. Firstly, new viewers wouldn't feel overwhelmed to jump on board with the vast lore of the Arrowverse. They could try out a six episode series and see if they're interested and be able to experience a full arc, which would give more people access to the universe. I mean, in Arrow's final season was only 10 episodes and it was probably the best paced season yet. And secondly, if the shows were shorter, the budgets would be higher per episode and we wouldn't have to bear some of the corny effects and costume designs. Just look at how Marvel is succeeding with their Moon Knight limited series. We get to know a character that many new viewers have never heard about within just six episodes. And if it's not for us, you can check out The Winter Soldier or Mrs. Marvel and get a sample of their worlds. But with The Flash having 171 episodes and Supergirl having 126, much fewer people are going to be interested in starting from the beginning as new viewers, regardless of whether or not there's some good backstory in there. Less is more, people. In an eight, the finales. And no, not just because they're ending. The finales that these shows have created some of the most jaw-dropping moments in the DC Entertainment multiverse history. The Glades getting destroyed in Star City, Eddie Thawne killing himself to stop reverse Flash, Barry creating Flashpoint, Leanne Yu exploding with everyone on the island, Vandal Savage killing Carter and escaping with Ken, Kara certain she was going to die in the Supergirl season 1 finale. All of these moments were incredible and emotional, including even some of the series finales. All of her meeting Felicity in the afterlife after 20 years actually made me tear up. Even mid-season finales were memorable. Barry's first encounter with Reverse Flash at Christmas, Felicity being shot and nearly dead in season 4 of Arrow, learning that Iris was going to die. That one made me have to see my girlfriend at the time instantly. Oliver's supposed death in season 3. I mean, I was watching that in drama class in high school and I my jaw dropped as we were walking to the library okay they know how to do cliffhangers well and they use it excellently I mean they could have done a couple of them better, but uh. <laughs> at number seven is that there is some pretty weak writing at times. One example of this is the overuse of the power of love in The Flash season seven. When Spectre corrupts the speed force, Barry needs to create another one artificially. And the way that he does this is by eventually using the power of love between himself and Iris. And it works somehow, but it is reliant on the existence of three other forces which are personified as the villains of that season, at least for the first half. And what makes this even weirder is that the personification of the speed force is Barry's mother. And although this might add more drama to the season, it's a bit too bizarre to justify since in essence, Barry gives birth to his own mother. This type of writing just feels like it would never fly in a DC comic. So when you see it in the Arrowverse, it sort of sticks out like a sore thumb, diminishing the credibility of the world they're creating. And it's six adaptations. While some decisions are questionable, particularly giving birth to your own mother, there are plenty of comic adaptations that have worked well in the Arrowverse. Deathstroke, Green Arrow, 
Arrow and the Flash's suits all work incredibly well, especially when Barry finally gets the golden boots, which when announced at DC Fandom had everyone cheering. At least I think they were cheering. It was online so I couldn't hear them, but it was trending on Twitter, I think. Not to mention the various storyline adaptations like The Trial of Oliver Queen and The Trial of Barry Allen, which were also adapted into the stories of the show. And I mean, some like to argue that if it's not what the comic is, it shouldn't be made. But I think the beauty of this is that there are things that are different in the story. Like if you want the exact story from the comic, just read the comic. If you know exactly what's going to happen in the story, what's the point of watching it? And that's what the Arrowverse does well. Taking what we already know and remember and making it new and exciting all over again. At number five is the issue that the Arrowverse wasn't built up properly by the DCEU before it started. What DC was missing in terms of their television rollout was an established world that would inform a set of new series for the small screen. If some of the earlier and more ambitious DCEU projects had worked a little better, there would have been more to work with when booting up a Supergirl or a Green Arrow series. And the studios were probably quite aware of this because they made the major decision to have their TV shows all exist as standalone storylines, without acting as continuations or prologues of the DCEU films. Part of what makes people interested in watching Marvel's The Falcon and The Winter Soldier is that they'll be able to see what happens for those two characters and the world around them after Endgame. But with much fewer people caring about what happened after, let's say the Justice League, The Flash had to do a lot of that work on its own, which is a lot to ask for and might have put too much pressure on the franchise to really allow it to flourish. In it for Easter eggs. Some of the various Easter eggs from the other shows are actually incredible, and they were doing it since the start, really. Deathstroke's mask on Leanne Yu in episode one of Arrow made everyone instantly know what was the kind of theme we were going with here. I mean, in Roy's first appearance, he was also wearing a red hoodie. And then all the way to recreating posters for The Flash of Two Worlds and Supergirl vs. The Flash. Plus, I mean, we got some pretty sweet name drops of various characters like Red Death and Bruce Wayne before Batgirl was even considered to be a show. These series are packed full of easter eggs for fans of both multiple shows and the comics alike. Cisco used to wear Big Bang Theory t-shirts all the time, and then Sheldon from Big Bang Theories started wearing and talking about The Flash even more, which is a whole other thing because technically Big Bang Theory would be in the DC multiverse, but that, that I'm not going to talk about that. There's also the reverse Flash suit from the past Flash season finale that was designed to look like that of Daniel West, and more so than the rival from season 3 because we can just forget about that. This is the version of Daniel West that I wanted. At number 3 is the tendency for the Arrowverse to have not the best costumes. One of the biggest challenges for superhero TV TV shows or any fantasy genre series on the small screen is to serve the story and its characters properly while working with a smaller budget. And one of the most costly departments in the world of TV and film is the costume department. It seems as though the Arrowverse suffers on this front considering the fact that we will sometimes come across some very underwhelming costumes. Like Elongated Man's costume for instance. It looks like something out of Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Now these details might not always be worth ranking high on a list like this, but when you're bringing pre-existing superheroes from the comics to life on screen, there are standards, and sometimes the Arrowverse isn't able to deliver on those fronts. But ultimately, in number two, crossovers. There is something to be admired with the crossovers that the Arrowverse has managed to pull together. You have to admit that the majority of these moments were pretty sick. Arrowverse's Flash, Invasion, Crisis on Earth X, Elseworlds, and Crisis on Infinite Earths were all events that they hyped up and typically delivered, especially with both Crisis events, those being Earth X and Infinite Earths. Those crossovers had some major revelations on multiple shows, with Infinite Earths really being the Infinity War of the Arrowverse. Spanning five episodes and five shows, this was one of, if not the biggest crossover in television. And it changed the entire universe as we know it. It also introduced Ezra Miller's Flash, confirming this to be in the DC Entertainment multiverse now. I also liked seeing Elseworlds because Oliver was the Flash and it was funny to me. Although I wish he had gotten the opportunity to meet Nora since at the time she was still on the show. And then Oliver just randomly out of nowhere seeing that Barry had a kid from the future living with him. That was 
was also his daughter from the future would have been very interesting to watch. Plus, it brought back John Wesley's ship, Barry Allen, which uh, was pretty damn cool. Okay, the number one worst thing about the Arrowverse is that the show concepts are just too broad. And before I proceed, I make my half of this list entirely out of love for DC. I just want them to do better. And one of the biggest issues I have with the Arrowverse is that they aren't creative enough with how they frame their shows. What I mean by this is that their shows tend to explore one hero very generally and for episodes and episodes on end, but with no unique angle. Marvel did an amazing job at starting their TV rollout with WandaVision because instead of making a show called The Scarlet Witch and making 200 episodes about various adventures of hers, they decided to take a very specific and creative angle on her growing romance with Vision and further including subtextual commentary on the medium of television itself while they told this love story. Now I'm not saying that The Flash, Arrow, Supergirl or Batwoman are all bad shows, but I am saying that they could have released a whole mini series on Flashpoint for example instead of having it referenced in only one episode in The Flash's 171 episode run. And that's only so far. Anyway, it's pretty clear to me that there were more streamlined creative ways of telling these characters stories than covering their entire journeys under one umbrella. But that's just me. Okay, Ben, yeah, I'll, I'll give it to you. They, there are certainly things that they could have improved on. I would have loved the Flashpoint miniseries. Exactly, I'm, I'm glad you can see that now. Are you, are you not gonna say that you can see things my way now? Nope, not at all. What? Thank you guys so much for watching. I can't say enough about how much I appreciate you guys agreeing with only my side of this video. This has been Top 10 Nerd. I've been your host, Ben Ball. This uh, has been Canner. Uh, yeah, I've been Connor. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. You know the rest. Comes ahead of Minecraft Nightmare, though.